Okay, we've got a 2008 Suzuki Forenza. We're going to be replacing the heater core in this. And this already came with the foam and everything on it here, so I don't have to worry with that. But um, I've got quite a few things removed from the car that you won't need to remove, but I'm doing some other work on it. But the very first thing you'll want to do is get your battery disconnected before you go to start working on the inside. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. Okay, as we come to the inside, the very first thing we're going to start on is this screw right up here, Phillips screw, and then we've got another one we'll move the seat to get to right back there, but we've got these on both sides. We're going to go ahead and start with these up here. Okay, now coming from the back with the seat pushed forward, we can easily get to the Phillips screws right back here. And so we got one on each side. Okay, so the next thing we'll need to do is go ahead and pull this emergency brake all the way back as far as we can. Okay, now this is just going to slide back. And we should be able to just slip this piece up and off of here at this point. But we'll have to work this boot up and over the top of this before we can slip it completely off here. <clears throat> Okay, that piece out of the way, we've got we got a couple more right here on each side that we're going to need to get out. Okay, and those are in a difficult spot here with the seat in the way, but I worked them with a short stubby. Now we're going to need to get the key in and move this here back. Make sure that you know you got your wheels chalked and everything to be safe. Okay, there's a lock release under here that you don't even need to use the key because if the battery is not connected, it will not work. It's right there. You don't even have to pop that up. Just get in there with your screwdriver and push that right there down and it'll pull it right back. Okay, so we're pulling this back and we're going to have to disconnect where our cigarette lighter and we got another wire right here that's hidden give that a push down right there and now we can set this aside and here's that release right there okay now because we're removing the dash all of this here will have to be removed as far as these wires there's another wire right here it's going to disconnect and you want to label these things as you're taking them apart but um, we're going to just work this wire loose and figure out where it's all connected to and get it labeled and have this pull this back up here so it will be loose when we go to pull on the dash so I'm going to work on that and I think the next thing we're going to get on is probably the steering column Okay, because of this wire move going back here, um, usually they just disconnect, but it's looking like this one is going down under the seats, and to avoid having to do extra work, I think we're going to um, <clears throat> see if we can just work on this up here. Maybe we'll just pull the dash back here and set it on the seats without completely removing it, because this is really going to get involved. I'm going to have to take up the seats at the very least to be able to get these because it looks like one wire is running through here and then running out to each of the seats so we're going to switch over here now and start um, popping some of this dash here loose and get into this steering column okay this piece is pretty straightforward before you can pop it off you have to push down on this and then that just slips out through here 
so it's just clipping on there and you have to come underneath and push down on that part of the clip right there and get that to pop out and then you're able to get the rest of that piece <clears throat> so we're going to work on these bolts right here next okay and what we got here is four of these 12 millimeters we're going to remove okay now we can take this piece down out of the way and the next thing we're going to do is get to work on getting the getting these Phillips heads out of the steering column here so we can get this shroud piece off Okay, you should have three Phillips screws. You're gonna have one machine screw and then a couple of coarse screws that look like that. <clears throat> now, uh, we may have to lower this down, but the only thing that we need to do now is just pop and separate these two. Um, you can use a plastic tool, a putty knife works well but we just need to pop these two pieces and it looks like we got a, another screw right here that I didn't see originally okay and there's one on each side there okay and it's just a little tiny screw there that's the first time I've seen one quite like that. Should be able to wiggle this when we get the key out of the way. Okay, and basically now we're just gonna go through here and every one of these wires we're going to label and disconnect here and put everything back where it goes but we're going to get all these disconnected and labeled okay now these are really easy to disconnect you just push down here pull them apart i'm not even seeing hardly any safety locks the biggest thing is you just want to <clears throat> label everything that one you just pull down there this is the same way we're just going to work on one side at a time. Okay, on this one, you push back that safety lock and then push down right there and it'll come off. And uh, it's a good idea to use a pick tool or a little plastic tools. It really uh, gets to hurting your fingers because you're going to be taking a lot of connectors loose. Okay, with the majority of all the wires disconnected, and there's a bunch of them, we've still got a few clips back here on this that we need to push in and disconnect. And there's a couple more wires down here, so we need to make sure all the wires are off. Okay, with the wires loose, we're going to get to work on the steering column itself. We've got a couple of bolts up here. And back here, we've actually got about four. You can see, got a bolt at the bottom, a nut at the top. Same on this side. But the first thing we're gonna do is remove this right here. And we're going to make sure that we put some kind of mark so we don't mix this up going back as well. Let's see, it's got some orange paint there now, but I'm going to put my own little mark here on the side. Steering wheel's locked up here. And so we'll just want to make sure that we're not turning it or anything. We're going to get started on this bolt, though. Okay, and there we got that bolt completely out right there. Now we're going to get to work on these 12s up here and we'll get a long extension start taking those out and we'll take these out up here last okay so here i am just with this long extension we're going to get up there and get all four of those out okay so those nuts and bolts are out so now we're going to get started on these 
Okay, I'm getting the final ones. I'm gonna have to get a handle on it or get a hand on it here. Okay, we got it just drop down here, and we got an important sensor right here that we need to disconnect as well. And it's got a safety lock, I do believe here. Okay, no safety lock. It just snaps in there for that piece, and this just kind of slipped off of there. I'm going to put it back. Okay, now with it loose, this will just lift right up and off of here. You can just pick it up and just we'll carry this whole thing out. Okay, it's very important that steering wheel is locked before you take it out. Uh, you can mess up that torque sensor. So make sure it's locked that you're not able to turn it. So you can see we got this out of here. So now we're going to move on to... Um, getting the dash loose. Well, they will just start down here since we're at it. We've got some bolts, two bolts on each side. And we're gonna go ahead and just take those out. And uh, then we're gonna work on finding all of our bolts hidden in various places. So we got one hiding up in there. Usually most of them are the same. You're gonna have a few out here on these outsides. Um, so we pop that off and see we got three there always have them in the center and then they'll usually be like I said a few they're hiding like that one right there so we'll get on these here first okay and these are 10 millimeters so they're gonna be on both sides <clears throat> and you'll just need to come up with some kind of system for keeping up with your screws and label them so you don't get mixed up okay if we're taking more bolts we these kick panels we got a phillips screw right down here and then these just kind of like have these snaps that you can use a, a flat screwdriver on or just pop them out we're going to also pop these up and off of here just pull them up that one and we'll get on this piece okay that uh, there actually does just screw off there with a the flat it just goes up there on a stud so we got this one out of the way we'll do the same thing on the other side okay I'm gonna go ahead and get on these bolts on this side now we've got this um, 10 millimeter on this that'll have to come out any wires that are attached to this are going to catch when we got to pull it back so we're going to need to get this out here i'm going to go ahead and work on all these bolts though first okay with those three out we're going to get on this one hiding right up in here with a long extension there's that one these have all been 12s so far up in here by the way now we should um we probably got some up in the dash but i haven't got up in that area yet I'm just working on all these down here that I know where they are. All right, so just popping this piece off over here. And we've got another three that are revealed right in there. And we'll probably get this glove box out next. Uh, should be able just to push in on the sides and get it out of the way. Okay, we got those three out over here. Now, before you drop this here down, there are these plastic pegs. You just pull them out. And then you can drop it down. It'll actually come off. But you just got to squeeze these in. Just like so. <clears throat> I'm just assuming that needs to come out because there's probably going to be some wires or something I need to get to. But every dash has its secrets. And I got to figure out where all the hidden bolts are at. And um, I'm not for sure what exactly is going on up here just yet. Okay, I took the bolt on this side. It turns out there's actually another one on this side too that I hadn't even seen. So I'm going to get that one next. Okay, we've got a couple of 
Phillips I'm gonna take out here because I'm not for sure if we don't have some bolts and stuff in here so I'm gonna take this instrument panel out next because it still feels like it's pretty secure okay with the screws out this just pops out of here just be careful you just have the clips there and there you just pop that whole thing out so I just want to get back in here and take a look to see if there's any other bolts um, I've got some more Phillips there I need to get loose Okay, I don't see anything here, so I'm probably on the wrong track. I'm gonna just put this back, and uh, I'm gonna have to figure out what exactly we got holding it. I may work on these pillars here next. Um, it may be not allowing me to lift up here, but it just feels really, really solid, like I've got some more hidden bolts. Okay, these are real easy to pop off. Just give it a little tug this way and it'll just fly right off there okay so here we go we've got a big either a Phillips or you could also use looks like maybe a 10 or something on that but I'm gonna try to get in there with my Phillips and get that loose and uh, there's also one over here so we're gonna get those out I think that's what's holding me up Okay, and that's all those are so I think that this is everything that's holding it um, it seems to be pretty loose now <clears throat> I'm gonna get down here and get to work on this big wire and I'm gonna look and make sure I'm gonna have a few more over there and what we're gonna try to do is um, move this back as far as we can you know obviously we got this wire attached I don't want to disturb every bit of that but we're going to try to pull this back over here out of our way enough that uh, hopefully we can do what we need to do. Okay, so we got that tin loose. Just be careful, don't bend any of your prongs. <clears throat> and we're going to um, just check around here and see what else we've got connected. Okay, we got something hanging us up over here. We're going to take these Phillips out of this piece right here and remove this right here okay with that out of the way we can see we've got a Phillips that's attached to this where the blower would be and it's not uncommon for there to be some brace or something over here on this side so I think this is the only thing holding the rest of this dash now it's not a bad idea to wear gloves too. this a lot of this stuff in here is really sharp and you can cut yourself so we're gonna okay still feels like we've got something else okay uh, we're gonna take a look up here and see what's going on okay right here is another one that's going to the box we gotta get this Phillips right here. See anything that's attaching this to the HVAC box is gonna put us in a bind. And I'm all but certain we've got some more wires. Okay, it's feeling pretty loose here now. So I think we've about got it, except for our wires. So I'm gonna see about trying to push it get it over here where maybe I can get it out of the way. I really, uh, the way this is running under the carpet is what's making matters difficult. Uh, I don't want to cut that carpet because then your carpet wants to start, you know, pushing down. So I may have to, um, <clears throat> I may have to take this carpet and pull it back. If I have to, may even have to wind up taking a seat out. It's really not a big deal. Okay, two things I noticed, um, didn't think about. Got the cable controls going to the door up here. You have to just kind of squeeze in on those and pop that off. And then you got a couple of screws going in to the box here. These that hold that, and there's one on the other side. I'll show you that one. Th that does have to come loose. 
before you can pull this unit back. Okay, and same thing on the passenger side. If this slips over that right there. You just squeeze in slightly on those and then you can slip that off and then you take, see where those two screws are, take those out and that takes that loose. Okay, there's a bracket that's directly behind the radio, if you can see that right there. And that has a Phillips screw. Now that's what's holding to the HVAC box. So I'm either gonna have to try to get that screw or I'm gonna have to take that radio out. So I'm gonna see what I can do here. Okay, so I popped this loose with my trim piece and I'm gonna have to disconnect the wires down at the bottom here. I think I'm just gonna pull this up and then get the screws out of the radio. Okay, I've just slipped the radio kind of out the bottom. With the, got the antenna and the connector off and now I can see that back there, what I'm needing to get to. So I'm just gonna kind of stick the rest of this back in place and I'm just gonna go in there and get that out of the way. I really don't know why that's there. Uh, but anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and take that out. Okay, with that piece out of there, or that screw, we've actually got this loose now. So I'm gonna go ahead and start kind of working this back, but I do have a lot of wires attached. Okay, there was a connector up there on the brake that I took loose. And come over here, there's three connections going to this actuator and resistor and the motor. So I've got these here loose, and then it was just the antenna. And this is all ready. I'm just gonna slide it back as far as I can, just to try to set it on the seats here. You can see it's all loose up here though. Okay, so here is the dash. Now I took this yellow wire you see here loose so I could run it over the top of that carpet so it wouldn't have a lot of tension on it. That required taking that ground off right there and unsnapping it in a few places, not a big deal. But now it's not got the tension on it. Now this is where our heater core is gonna be in this part. Now what I don't know is how much trouble this is gonna be and uh, hoping that we're not gonna be disturbing any of our Freon. You can see how it has bolts that come through the bottom on its part over here, but it almost looks to be like a separate unit, but we do have a screw going into this side here, nonetheless, right there. So we'll want to take that out at the very least. And I'm going to go ahead and show you on the engine bay here. Okay, and there is no engine in here. Now this is your heater core hoses. You see one's a little bit different size than the other. Now what you have to do is get a pry bar and kind of sort of unglue these. They also make a tool that kind of comes behind them you can pull them off either way it's going to be difficult but you're going to have to move the clamps back when you get in here of course your engine is going to be in here and you're going to just pop those off and you can kind of see the location over here you got your evaporator and right here in the middle where we got our heater core okay just to give you a view of this And you can see um, over here on in this part is where evaporator is coming into. And then the heater core is going to be down in this lower portion of this box. And the only thing that we can do is split this apart. <clears throat> now usually if this um, foam's in good shape, you can just either peel it loose or just cut it right here, split it. Instead of untaping it, just split it at this joint right here because the box is gonna have to come in half and you can see the runner from this side. You can see our um, actuator, our um, cable control for our blend doors and stuff. 
and then you got the one on this side this over here is electronic controlled for the recirc or the outside air So anyways, we'll get on this other side here. Just wanted to give you a, a good view of that. We'll get on this other side and start seeing about splitting this box apart from the driver's side. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this side right here. I'm just gonna start taking these loose and I'll work my way over to the other side. Okay, next thing I'm gonna peel this carpet back so I can um, look up under here and get to these screws and Said, I'm just playing this by ear. Hopefully I'm gonna be able to get to these and do what I need to do without having to uh, move this box a whole lot. Now I can <clears throat> take the bolts loose from the outside and it will give me more flexibility, but I'm gonna see what I can do as far as what I can get loose first. Okay, now you definitely won't have a view like me, but what we're gonna do, we've got these 10 millimeters and I'm not looking to take the box loose because I don't wanna disrupt the Freon. But what I want to do is get some slack. So we're going to take these, all these tins that you see, these bolts going through. We're going to take every one of these loose and see if I can get some slack. Because as it is, I don't have enough to uh, get to the other screws on the HVAC box. Okay, we've got all those out. So we're going to go inside and see how much slack we have. Okay, it's been pretty simple so far and I'm actually pretty happy. The, there's a screw down at the bottom here as well as there's one up here. So you get those loose, you can see this side is pretty free. So what I gotta do is get my um, heater core side. It's pretty loose, but it's still being held so I'm gonna figure out what's going on here, why it's not coming loose, but this is actually separating from this, which I'm happy with, because we won't have to worry about disturbing the Freon. Okay, so with just a little bit of wiggling here, we've got this loose, and of course you wanna watch out that you're not spilling coolant, like I just did. I said it was just a little bit stuck in there. So we're gonna get this cleaned up. Okay, so now we just gotta work the rest of these seven millimeters out. Really don't have very many of them. I think there's like maybe three or four we've got here left. Just the ones on that back side. You can see right there is where those screws were going in that's coming through the firewall. just a coarse head screw. Usually there's like a, they have like studs or something, but whatever gets the job done. I've got one more. You want to make sure you get this thing drained completely before you go to flipping it around. You'll have coolant going everywhere on you. Okay, so we're going to be careful once we go to start removing this. We don't want to have things flying out of place and everything. Okay, so we're firstly, we're going to just peel this piece off here as best we can. So we can kind of separate this. Okay, I found at least one sneaky screw hiding right down in this part right here that I got to get out. And there's also another one down here up in this front. I assume that these are probably the last two holding this. Carefully I took and cut the foam where the split's at. Okay, here we go. We got those screws out. <clears throat> Is there 
want to try not to move anything because we want to get everything back into place. So there's all of your different control doors. <clears throat> and here we've got our heater core over here. Now this one is actually not leaking, but the problem is that there was stop leak put in the vehicle. And so uh, you'll never, no amount of cleaning, and um, I don't know if you can see anything in there, but um, there was stop leak put all in it, so you can trust me. There's no amount of cleaning going to get that stuff out. <clears throat> so let's get our new one over here. Okay, so here's our new heater core, and this big end here is the one that's going to go down. That's according to how it came out of this part here. So I've got the big end back down and we'll put that top half back on. We'll make sure that it's lining up with everything. But it says fits in there real easy. Okay, so I'm getting ready to slip this half back on. I took the time to put a little white lithium back. <clears throat> Just want to make sure, absolutely sure that we get everything lined up and we're going to check and make sure all of our little doors are going to be working. Okay, once we've verified that all of our doors are opening and everything's where it should be, we're going to go ahead and start putting our little 7 millimeters back in. Okay, so we're just working our way around. We can't forget the ones that we got to get in the middle as well. So, and after we get them all screwed down, we're going to verify that our doors are still working properly and we don't have any binds anywhere. Definitely don't want to get it back together just to find out we got a problem. Okay, the last piece I put on here was this seal and I'm ready to go ahead and just stick it back in the car and I uh, just fasten it with the two screws to the other box. Okay, so other than getting the bolts from the outside, we got this all set into place. Before it gets too late, I'm gonna go ahead and set the dash. You'll note these alignment pegs that are going along. You got two on the top. You got a couple of big ones here on each side that are gonna go into these locations. <clears throat> Setting up in here. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get this dash reset before it gets too dark we'll carefully watch out for these wires and stuff but I'm gonna go ahead and push that carpet down we'll go ahead and set reset the dash since we got all this uh, bolted down where we need it we checked these these are in the position and this all is nice and secure okay so I wanted to get this set up here because you can't shut the doors with it down here in the way and um, so I've just got it set up on the alignment pins up there and then the ones going through here it lines up real easy I put the top two in just loosely I'm gonna get them all in at the same time but we'll get back on it in the daylight anyway but this is probably one of the easier heater cores I will say to get to because I've never got one out and put the dash back in in an afternoon Okay, uh, back out here today, it's pretty straightforward from here. We're just going to work on getting all of our bolts back in. We'll just start over here with these three. I'm just using a magnet to kind of get them started. Just so I'm not dropping them. You could use some Loctite on these if you want. Yep, yeah, still dropped it. 
All right, so we got those three and we're not gonna snug anything down. We're just gonna get them started loosely till we get everything, all the bolts in place. Okay, next we got these two bolts that have the washer and they're gonna go up in here. And just using the magnet, kind of get it into place. And then we got the one over on this side. All right now I'm gonna get my long extension and just snug those up a little bit, not tighten it. Okay, now we're gonna come down to our center and we've got these two 10 millimeters that are gonna go on each side. When we start tightening, we're gonna start with the uppermost <clears throat> near the, um, the windshield up there. We'll snug those down first. All right, so we'll get on the other side here. And right, we'll get these on the other side. Okay, now we're just gonna get these three in over here. Let's try it again. That's why I like to use the magnet because it's a lot easier to get them into place. Sometimes. Okay. Okay, we've got those in. Go ahead and just snug these down a little bit. And this is the last of our bolts for the dash. We do have some bolts that are some screws that are going to go to the HVAC box itself don't really think they serve much of a purpose <clears throat> other than just making it more difficult for you to remove the dash but <clears throat> I will not be putting the screw back behind the radio you now with a lot of dash you can take them out simply uh, without removing the radio or any of those things by unbolting it and disconnecting the wires but this one had the hidden screw behind the radio we won't be putting that one back but we will put these over here so we got one there and we got one right here we'll put these back just because they're easy to get to <clears throat> but with the um, you have to remove this anyways to get to these wires in here Okay, like I said, I'm gonna just start up here. I'm gonna snug these down. I'm just using a Phillips. And I'm gonna snug these up here down real good. And then I'm gonna work my way down to the lower ones and just start snugging all those up. And then we'll start working on our wires. Okay, the dash is all bolted down. The first thing I'm gonna start with is just this cable that just snaps onto that. And we got the two screws right there, the uh, seven millimeters to screw it down with. So I'm going to go ahead and snap this side on. Okay, so now we just got to tighten, tighten these screws up. Alright, 
so we got that snugged down. All right, so now we just got to go in here and get this flipped on here. You can extend that with your little controller by pushing that, and it just snaps on. Just like that. And then we can verify that it's working like it should be. Let's go to the other side. Okay, it's important to note that this cable that runs over to this driver's side routes right through here. So it comes on this side where you have this connector and then we run it back up here to where you can see those two screw holes right there. We're going to attach that just like that, and then we'll pull it back and get it snapped on as well. Okay, so we got that um, screwed down there, so now we're going to go ahead and just pull this up here and snap it on just like we did that other side. It's just that easy. So we'll make sure that it's working. Okay. okay, I guess we'll um, start with some connectors and uh, we'll start with this one right here that connects to this. Okay, the next time we're going to go to this junction right here that has the 10 millimeter. And it's a good idea to, you know, try to protect things because anything that can get damaged will get damaged. Alright, so we're just going to tighten up this 10 millimeter. It doesn't have to be terribly tight. Um, you can and will strip this thing out. Okay, then I got a connector here. So everything I've got has been labeled, so there's no confusion going back. Now, really, the most time consuming part of this job you're going to find is going to be the steering column. There's a lot of connectors on that steering column and that's going to take up the majority of your time <clears throat> you know i would i'd read something somewhere where somebody had figured out how to take this heater core out without removing the dash and i would sure like to know how it was they pulled that off Okay, so we'll just fasten that back in behind this and that clip. I believe that's where it went. Okay, I might have skipped a few I didn't label, but there's this one here goes over onto this um, this gas pedal. And I've got one here that I didn't label, so I'll have to figure out what's going on with that one here as well. Okay, that goes to the steering column on the back there. I had to go back and look. Uh, I believe it's that torque sensor. But so all of our wires here are good. I'm going to go over to the other side and reconnect what we disconnected over there. Okay, these here are pretty straightforward. We got the one that's going up here to this actuator, the recirc, and this will go down, feed it, feed it down under here. And these just go right here to our motor. 
in the relay. All right, very easy. I think while we're at it, we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to put this screw back here. And we're going to put this screw back right over here. Only other thing is our antenna wire here. And very easy to reconnect that. Okay, this wire goes to the console. I'm going to go ahead and plug this one back in to the gear shifter here. Okay, you'll note I did snap those back down into place. This here will be perfectly fine. We just need to have this up here so we can connect to the console. So I think the next thing I'm gonna go ahead and just put this radio back in. Just got the little four bolts. Uh, like I said, I'm not putting that screw <clears throat> back down in there. It's not necessary and um, just makes it difficult uh, taking this dash out. Okay, a mistake I just made was not putting this radio in before I connected my cable. So I'm going to have to unhook those so I can get this back into place here. As you can see, not a lot of room without ha really having this out of the way. And it's got a lot of connectors. Got connectors going, two connectors going to this up here. And, uh, you know, then the connectors down here. And I've just took one cable off of one side and kind of pulled it over and worked it in here. But still uh, not a lot of room. I guess you could just disconnect these and kind of fold it down. But nevertheless, I've got it in there. Just getting ready to put the two bolts on to each side and get this back in place okay with the radio back in we're going to move on to the next big test just getting our steering column back in here okay it'll pretty much only go one way we just got the steering wheel or steering column set in here and we've got that's the part we're going into we've got it marked as to which side we got the paint mark on and we're just going to fit that right in there first and uh, once we get the collar together we'll loosely start the bolt here i'm going to put some high strength loctite and uh, once we get that done we'll push this up here and we'll get these first two up here started into this okay so i've just snugged that bolt down a little bit i haven't got it all the way tight <clears throat> and i'm getting ready to go ahead and start feeding this back up in here. Now one of the things we want to do is get this reconnected as we're doing it. But we're just going to go ahead and push that back up on here, on here and get our bolts over here for the steering column and nuts. Okay, so the easiest nuts is to get started with these right up here. And then we can go back here and we can push the rest of that on and get our other bolts nuts into place right back here and then we'll get these wires kind of here you can't see but we're just going to push that back on those studs back there and get those started okay i'm just using my long extension to work these up here in place i'm going to go ahead and snug them in just a moment okay and the same thing with these we're just we snug them all down kind of at the same time so now I've got them all snug. I'm going to go ahead and tighten them. Okay, with all the uh, bolts holding the steering column tight, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to tighten up that 12 millimeter nice and snug. Okay, now we have all these fun connectors to reconnect. They usually go back together quicker than they do uh, coming off if you're worried about trying not to break any of the little snaps. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and get started on this. We've got everything numbered, so it should be no problems. And uh, before I forget, I still haven't got this. This goes back on the top back here. Don't want to forget that. So we're just going to go ahead and just get everything reconnected back here. And uh, then we'll move on from there. We've about got everything though. Okay, so we got all of the wires reconnected here. 
We got one over here going to that. And um, with any luck, we'll be able to get this little column piece back on here now. Get all these stuff back around here. It is a lot of wires though. Okay, so we got the bottom piece. Getting ready to set this here. Remember, we got the little screws. We got to turn the wheel to get those to line up. Okay, I think the next piece we're just going to slip our pillars back into place here. Make sure you get them lined up well. Okay, now we're going to get our kick panels reinstalled. And we got a, a little screw that goes down here, and then that sits on that little stud with the plastic piece holding it. Okay, so we got the screw and then we tightened up that plastic clip. We'll go ahead and get this piece. <clears throat> we'll just do the same thing on that other side. Okay, now we'll pop our fuse panel piece back on here. Okay, our next thing up, we've got our four bolts. We're going to get into this panel, this metal panel that's just going to go right back up under here. Okay, now we just got this panel. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is this piece here we just slide it up it's real simple and there's a little snap you can see right there let me see if I can get in here a little better so push that all the way up and then it locks not quite right here I think I just okay I got these on the wrong side there we go these must be on top of here and that just goes in and locks just like that so that's all there is to that <clears throat> and then once we've got that we can just kind of watch our little snaps pop the rest of this back into place. And it does work. Of course we have this piece to pop back on over here as well. Okay, so we're uh, almost there. We just got to get this glove box back into place. We just have our screws that um, go around this perimeter here. We're gonna lock those down. And then we'll get our glove box itself back over here. Okay, with that bolted in, we just got our little little pegs that slip through. We'll just slip it on here and pop it up into place, and then we'll pop our pegs in there. Okay, so I'm just getting ready to slide this in. And you could probably put a little grease on here. It'll probably make it a little bit easier. So we'll see if it works, and it works fine. All right, so we're almost done. All thing we got to do is get our console here back in. We just got one connector there for it. We'll slide the upper half in first, and then we'll get our back half into place. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and work this down. And before we do anything else, we'll want to go ahead and reconnect our one connector right here.
Okay, now let's see if we can just work this back down into place. Okay, it looks like I need to get my brake back out of the way again. So now we just need to get our screw back in there in the front and then we'll go ahead and put our back piece on. All right, so we're gonna get our first screw in here. We'll go over to that other side and we'll do the same exact thing. Okay, now I put the screws back in here. Now, those are a little bit trickier to start. I start them by hand, just kind of snug it up with a short Phillips. So we've got this pulled back. We're ready to go ahead and slip our uh, back console piece into place here. Okay, here we go with our console. We just mainly have to get it over that um, emergency brake there and just feed the front clips into place. We've got a couple screws in the back. Okay, so we've got that slip back down on there. All right, now we're just going to move our seats up and go ahead and get those screws in the back. Okay, so now I'm just getting the final screw in the back here. Okay, so we got everything back together here. Okay, so that's going to do it on replacing this heater core. I've spent a couple of afternoons. Um, I'm going to say that I maybe got six hours in it. This is actually, <clears throat> in terms of dash removal, this is a pretty easy car to deal with. Uh, the heater core was not very expensive. I ordered mine online. I think it was like $35. I'll leave a link to it. But um, anyways, I had some more work to do with the car anyways, but I wanted to get this done during my downtime while I was waiting on other stuff. So anyways, um, I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to leave a comment, please do so. As always, I invite you to subscribe, and thanks for watching.